Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson two of the multi-platform series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. Now, these tutorials work on any ARM-based system. They're just based on the processor's functions themselves. And today, we're going to be looking at binary coded decimal. Now, binary coded decimal is quite important when it comes to showing high scores and things on games. I create my little games, and I have a score and a high score, and I use eight digits for them. Now, the problem we have, especially on these 8-bit systems, is it's quite hard to split a large number up into individual decimal digits. And this is where binary coded decimal comes in and it provides a simple solution to solve this problem. Let's first go over to the blackboard and let's quickly discuss what binary coded decimal actually is. So let's suppose we've got our score here and let's, we've got lots of digits like this here. Now if we've got this stored in a sequence of bytes here, it's going to be quite difficult to, and if this is a hexadecimal number, to convert our digits and get the ASCII values out of this, because we'd have to repeatedly divide by 10. It would be quite slow, especially on the 8-bit processes. It wouldn't go so well. So binary coded decimal is a sort of simple solution to this, and it, it comes at a trade-off of saving, of losing some space. So what binary coded decimal does, quite simply, is um, if you think of a byte, and you think of two hexadecimal digits, each digit would go from 0 to 15, 0 to F in effectively, and the value would store up to 255. Now, what binary coded decimal does is it splits these digits up and says, well, instead of storing 0 to F, they're now only going to store 0 to 9. So our one byte, instead of storing 0 to 255, now stores 0 to 99. Basically, what we would do is we would count this up since so we go from 0, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then when it gets to A, we would roll this back to zero and we would add one to the next along. Now, some uh, processors have built in binary code decimal functionality to one extent or another, but the ARM doesn't really have that. And I couldn't, surprisingly, surprisingly to me at least, I couldn't find any algorithms to do binary coded decimal. So I, I don't know if the binary coded decimal just isn't something people worry about so much on the ARM because it's such a it's a so much faster processor with regard to being able to do division and things. But um, I wanted to port my binary coded decimal algorithms to it because I try and port my games in the same way across all systems. So I've written my own binary coded decimal algorithms to help me out and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to be doing this sort of geared towards gaming. We're basically going to create a function to add two binary coded decimal values together. That's for when we've gained some score. There will be a sample subtraction as well, which we don't really need in our games, or at least the games I write. And we've also got a showing routine, which will show a binary coded decimal value to the screen. Now, the final thing we will need in our games is the ability to compare two binary coded decimal values to each other. But because um, the only difference really between binary coded decimal and normal values is uh, that some of the digits are skipped during calculations, a high binary coded decimal value and a regular value are effectively the same if we're comparing them. And also my values are always eight digits, which is a single 32-bit word on the arm. So we can just load the registers and compare them as normal registers. So that's going to be nice and easy. Anyway, let's go over to the source code. Let's take a look at what we'll be looking at today. So we've got this example here. Now, the example will do various things. We've got this monitor function here, which will show the contents of registers so that we can see the byte values. Now, ironically, that will actually effectively show our binary coded decimal values here. Uh, anyway, because um, this value, although it starts with 0x, um, it is a valid binary coded decimal value because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is a valid decimal value. As I say, the only difference is that the two digits here, um, while that should be able to go up to 255, it now only goes up to 99 because we're skipping some of the digits with the, those values could, should contain. So there's our value that we're going to load in to R1. We're loading it in here and we're going to show that to the screen using this show BCD. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a test binary coded decimal value here. 1,199 we're going to add. And then we're going to subtract 1,199. And if that all worked correctly, you would hope we will end up with the final resulting value being correct. So let's test it and let's see what happens. Okay, so first of all, we've got the results of our monitoring routine here. So we've shown the contents of the registers and you can see the register contains the value there. We've then used our show BCD function and we've shown one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what we've done is we've added 1199. Well, let's get up our calculator, if we can get our calculator up. And we type in the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we add 1199. Then we should get the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 7, 7. And we've got the value 
one, two, three, four, six, eight, seven, seven. And the important thing is that when we added the nine to the eight, that will cause a, a rollover to the next digit along. And we've had to calculate all these ourselves. Now, once we've subtracted that value with our second command here, we've of course ended up with back with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Now, just as a second quick test, let's just change these values to some simpler ones and just see that these are definitely working here. So if we run this again, if I just turn off my calculator. So this time we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're adding 1000 in decimal. So we can see that this has now become one, two, three, four, six, six, seven, eight. And then we've subtracted one and you can see that has become one, two, three, four, six, six, seven, seven. So you can see that those calculations have worked correctly there. So that's what our functions are going to do here. So basically we are giving ourselves the ability to add and subtract binary coded decimal and also show them to the screen. Well, first let's take a look at the show binary coded decimal function, which is actually very straightforward. All we need to do is we need to get the characters from our source 32 bit value here one at a time. So we're effectively getting one nibble here and we're getting the most significant nibble first because we want to show our most significant digit first. So what we're doing is we are masking the digit we want into our zero and then we're removing that digit from our one because our one is the register that is containing the value we want to show. Now what we're then doing is we're shifting that from the top nibble to the bottom nibble with a logical shift here and then we're adding the character for the digit for the digit zero the ASCII character for a zero effectively converting the decimal number which remember can only go from zero to nine because although we've loaded in a nibble a b c d e and f can't be contained within a valid binary coded decimal byte so that won't be in there. So we're then just printing that character to the screen, subtracting one from our counter, which is going to be eight digits here. And we're just repeating and that will show our value to the screen. And we saw that earlier. Okay, so that's how we show a binary coded decimal value to the screen. What about when we want to add a binary coded decimal value? Well, this is the algorithm I've come up with and it's probably not the best, but it did at least work. I'll be honest, speed isn't exactly a priority for me when I'm porting my 8-bit games to a 32-bit system. So what I've got here is we are going to be using R0 for our intermediary calculation and we'll move it back to R1 at the end just because we were past the value in R1. And what we're going to do is we're going to do R1 equals R1 plus R2 here. So we've got R0, which is going to be for our intermediary calculation. We've got R6, which is going to be our carry. And then we've got R8, which is going to be for the rotation to handle moving the, the digits back into the result. And then we've got a character count for the number of binary coded decimal character digits we want to add together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now this time, we're going to basically do an addition from the least significant digit to the most. And this is going to be exactly the same as you might have done if you've ever done long addition. You might do something like this. If you were to do um, nine and plus 11, then you would maybe do nine plus one equals one zero, and then one plus one equals two. So you, you would do maybe something like this where you've got a carry line and two values you're adding together and a build up result that will become your final value. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're doing this in the, literally the same way. So we're getting the two digits from the two values that we want to add together. So this is the least significant digit here. And we're going to rotate this each time. So we're then going to add those two values together. And then we're going to add any carry in R6, which is going to start as zero. We're then going to compare that and see if that has go, gone over the decimal value 10, because if it has, we're going to need to correct it. Because remember, if we add nine plus one in, in um, hexadecimal, that will become a letter A. And we need to convert that to a one zero, and that's what we're doing here. So we're adding six to skip A, B, C, D, E, and F here to that digit. We're then masking the low nibble, which will now be a correct binary coded decimal digit. And we're then oring that into R zero, which is our result, shifted by R eight which is our rotation position for this digit. Now this, it's gonna start at zero. We're then masking and we're getting any carry and we're storing that in R6 for next time because remember we added R6 to our, um, to our value as we did the addition here. Now, what we're going to do next is we're then going to shift 
the source values that we were adding together, removing the digit that we've just added so that now the, the next digit along will be the one we will need to add next. We're then adding four to our rotation position so that when we add the next digit to our buildup in R0, it will be in the correct position. So remember we were rotating by R8 to put that in the correct position after each time. We're then subtracting one from our count and we're repeating. And once we're done, we're just moving R0 into R1. R0 and R1 will both contain the final value. But I'm just putting it into R1 for consistency because that was the, um, the, the one of the two parameters we passed in. So that's how we're doing our addition, adding each of them and building up the carry. Now the subtraction is basically the same. The only difference is the way we've done the carry and the way we've, we've handled the overflow is slightly differently. So once again, we've got all of the same values here. Once again, we're getting two of our digits here and we are then subtracting the digit from the two past parameters and we are then subtracting any carry, which will of course be zero by default. Now, what we're then doing is we're seeing if that has gone below zero, because if it's gone below zero, then we're going to have to create a carry. So once again, we're going to have to correct the value by subtracting six, and that's to, again, skip over F, E, D, C, B, and A. That's, that's to skip over those. And then what we're doing is we're setting the carry to one so that we're going to remove an extra digit from the next one. And we're masking R3 to make sure that we've only got one nibble because we don't want any extra data there because there'll be loads of other Fs in there because we've gone below zero. So that's what we're doing there. What we're then doing is we're oring that digit into our buildup again. And once again, we are removing the digits we've processed from our two source parameters. We are adding four to our rotation parameter, which remember we're using to rotate the digit into the correct position when we or it in. We're then subtracting one from our count and we're repeating, and that is what we're using to do our subtraction there. So there we go. So that's what I've used in this example. As I say, I'm not saying these are the best because I'm pretty certain they're not. I just quickly knocked them up to allow me to port the game I'm working on. So these are what I've used here to achieve showing the binary coded decimal and do the addition and subtraction here. Now, the game that I'm currently working on porting here um, to the arms is my little suck shoot game, which was originally on the 6809 and also the 8086 is now coming to the arm. And it uses, um, I need the addition to show this and the show routines to show the scores and the high scores. I don't actually need the subtraction, but I thought it was important to do that for completeness. So there we go. I mean, as always, you can go to my website and download the source code and have a go with it if you want. And if you find it useful in some way go ahead and make use of it that's what it's there for and you don't need to give me credit if you make anything amazing with it i'm i'm kind of doubtful the algorithms i've got here are particularly good but as i say they're su sufficient for my needs and i was rather surprised to see that i couldn't easily find any on the internet because as i say in in the 8-bit world uh, the binary code system was very popular maybe maybe arm doesn't ever need it anyway hope you've enjoyed this today thanks for watching and goodbye